Even if I had the time, that piece would take weeks to make. It would also be expensive between the canvases and the paint. Bro, come on. How hard can it be? You have to think about other Poeple, too, not just your slef. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another episode of Waiting to Dry, the only podcast that isn't trying to do a Zoom recording right now. <laughs> we decided to do something a little special this time, so this episode, my co-host is... Vanessa Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> my lovely girlfriend, Aww. and I am Sergio Lopez. <laughs> my lovely boyfriend. <laughs> So, yeah, we are doing this special quarantine edition because, yeah, we're, we're following the CDC guidelines and, and not going to, to our uh, normal studio location to, to record this. Which we mean Josh's house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we are at my art studio, which our, is now our art our studio. Our art studio, <laughs> yeah. So that's probably the most significant change in our lives during this whole thing right now. Yeah. I um we just signed the lease together last week, was it? Uh yes it was. Yeah. So now we have an art studio together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's been different for you especially, right? Because Yeah. Well I, I hang out here a lot and even before I was a um actual leaseholder, but now I actually have like a work area where I can go paint and mm -hmm. Um, a place to store all my paintings and my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was starting to get to a point at my house where I kind of had all my art supplies like crammed into whatever corner they could fit. And that was okay. But then I actually started to like produce paintings. Mm -hmm. and I was just like, I have nowhere to put these. I don't want to put them in like my basement. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So they're just kind of like sitting in awkward places, nowhere to really hang them or anything. So now I can put them here. And it, that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back after I had that art show. And then I have like 12 like gallery framed paintings. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, now I have a place here and I really enjoy it. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're you're pretty much in the same, same, similar. <laughs> you're in the similar <laughs> boat. <laughs> yeah. In the similar boat with me that we both still live at home. Yeah. And so, yeah, <laughs> I got this studio space for myself about five years ago. And yeah, it was a, a major change for me because I could, you know, spread out a bit more here. Oh, yeah. And I was um, running out of room at home and it really was time for me to, to you know, spread my wings and fly. <laughs> <laughs> spread my wings. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. As far as my art goes and... I don't know. Maybe I haven't done as much like large work as I've originally planned on doing, but it's definitely given me the freedom to feel like I can do it more. Well, at least. You have a few pretty big things in here. You have like one really big painting and then you got three or four, you know, decent sized ones. That probably would have been hard to do at home. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although I was doing fairly large paintings at home before, but it pretty much just took over the entire little 12 by 12 room that I had to, oh, to your, work your on. Office. Yeah, yeah, the little office area. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have, a, well, it's also nice just to have somewhere to get away where I can concentrate. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of have a lot of privacy at your house, but in my house, I don't really have a lot of privacy. Like I have my own room and I can shut the door, but it's kind of like an offshoot of the living room and it mm -hmm. doesn't like lock or anything. And it's also really small. So... I kind of get in this situation, I've seen some of our friends do this too, where it's like you have a bunch of stuff on your desk, mm -hmm. and then you move it to the bed, and then you right. move whatever else you're working on to, onto your desk, and then you go to bed, and then you have to like rotate everything back. Like there's not enough room for like all my stuff I'm working on to be like out all the time. Right. So I've kind of got to like adapt my setup to like, oh, I'm doing watercolor, oh, I'm doing beading, and I've got to totally like change around how everything is at home, which is a huge, huge pain. And... I really feel like here, like I, I have like four paintings in progress right now, which is super nice. And if I just was at home, there's like no way I would do it. Um, it also just like motivates me to get stuff done. Like I come here almost every night 
and it's like more or less I, I work on stuff, you know, and it's like mm-hmm. my dedicated space to work. I mean, we also hang out and stuff, obviously, but. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you set up your table there. Probably, well, it's about like six feet six long by or so. Three. Yeah. It's pretty big. Yeah. And like it's pretty much your dedicated space to, to work on things right now. It's, yeah. And it seems to work out well for you because you're primarily a, a water media artist, I would right. say. Right. I have an easel, but I don't really use it very often. I do eventually want to get into oil painting more. And it's like once this mm-hmm. quarantine is over, we could get back into plain air. Mm-hmm. Sergio started teaching me plain air, um, but then I think the holidays rolled around and things got a little crazy and also the weather kind of turned. So mm-hmm. kind of like the momentum faded a little bit. But I still really wanted to do it. But then, of course... This quarantine happens and now like going and standing in front of an easel for like two hours is not exactly something that's easy or advised to do. Right. <laughs> Even yeah. though you did it today anyway. But <laughs> Yeah. Although, yeah, I tried to get out of the way of, of the uh, like unusually busy traffic of the. Oh, the creek trail that right. was that today. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are places in the creek you can kind of go kind of mm-hmm. away a little bit. Yeah, I went down one of the paths, like, toward, like, that farm to oh, yeah. set up. That's so, nice. So, yeah, there was, like, a couple people on bikes who rode by. But um, the one nice thing about being in this quarantine is that I, you literally are not allowed to do the thing that I hate. <laughs> Just when people stand right behind you and, and oh, look at Oh, yeah. Oh, God, that's watch so annoying. <laughs> I can't stand that. Sergio and I were at the beach uh, before this quarantine. And um, I think that was when it was like shelter, not shelter in place. Well, yeah, it was shelter in place, but they were like advising us to go to parks still. And all the parks were free. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went to the beach and we were both painting. And like people are coming up to us and it's like, oh, you're painting to Sergio. And then they look at me like, you're painting too. Look at the two of you. You're both (laughs) painting. And it's just like, can you just go away, please? (laughs) Like, (laughs) I think I'm much more used to it, so it doesn't bother me as much. I know. Well, how introverted you are, I would think you would hate it, but I feel like you just block it out. You kind of like, when people do that to you, you don't even like really address them very much. You kind of just (laughs) like give them a little bit of a side eye. (laughs) Right. Maybe you're like, Yeah, I'm just like, yeah. (laughs) Really quiet little (laughs) things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, we know I'm not engaging with you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, that's my way to do it. I know people, are, the more entrepreneurial type of people would be like, oh, you should hand them your business card and tell them your website and all that. I'm just uh, like, nah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe it's because I'm not used to painting from life yet, even though I'm getting used to it. But I feel like I really need to concentrate when I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. And I don't like to like, oh, let's just stop and have a chat with a random person while I'm like seriously trying to concentrate on doing something, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, and also there's issues like I'm not very fast at it yet, even mm-hmm. if I'm like, slowly getting you know better at it but right. I'm still just not fast at it and it's like it's crazy how much the light changes like today I was in my yard painting some succulents and the weather was changing a lot and it's like now my light's just completely different because I'm not working fast enough mm-hmm. you know so it's just like yeah not a fan of people like distracting me <laughs> but yeah you're so fast at it, though. I don't like to, like, we'll be painting together and I'll look at Sergio stuff and he'll be, like, done and I'll just, like, just finish, like, the drawing part <laughs> of it. And it's just like, I oh, just don't. <laughs> just don't pay attention. <laughs> In time. In yeah, time. I'll get there. I'll <laughs> yeah. get there. In, like, 12 years or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I've been, yeah. I, I mean, I guess I started plein air painting in school. It was my first time, but I didn't really start to really work at it until... Mm, about 12 years ago. So, yeah, you're about right. <laughs> Ooh, look at me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got the timeline right. <laughs> right. Well, Sergio is going to be a plain air actual teacher soon. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about your course? Yeah, that's one of the main things I've been working on now that, so that there's no work at the frame shop, not even allowed to go there, really. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, it's giving me time to work on this thing that I've been just chipping away at um, for months now, but really been putting a lot of work into is this course I've been creating about basically how I how I do quick studies on location with oil paint that's what the main focus of the course has been so far and yeah it's just basically breaking down my method into simple steps and 
I put out a PDF on my website that people have downloaded and they said they've gotten stuff out of it. So it's really just me expanding everything that I know about that and putting it into uh, hopefully a cohesive and easy to follow method for it. But I don't know, it's, it's sort of hard to gauge whether I'm being too complicated in some areas and not explaining things enough in others. So Mm -hmm. it's definitely still a work in progress. And yeah, it's great that when you're able to look at and give me your perspective on what's going on, you've seen me paint. So it's easier for you to be like, oh, you didn't really explain this as well as you could ever. Right. There are some things that are kind of hard to put into words for the layman. And I feel like that's something that's kind of hard to tackle. Things like What is it like the colors being harmonious with each other? That's something I struggle a lot with as Mm -hmm. like a new plein air painter is like, I just want to paint what I see. But sometimes when I do that, it's like, it just doesn't look good together. So there's, you know, there's interesting things that kind of take experience, but I don't know. You work so hard on this course and you've done such a good job. Mm -hmm. Um, We've even uh, recorded some lessons, like I I videotaped him painting and Mm -hmm. it's really interesting. I feel like I've learned a lot, even if it's like, I'm not remembering straight up facts. I feel like just like Mm -hmm. watching you paint is really, um, helpful to me. (laughs) Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I think when it comes to teaching courses online, I think students think that they need to watch a ton of video on it. But it's really, I feel like it's, you don't necessarily need to watch a bunch of hours of people like putting down every stroke unless there's something like there's a lot of explanation to go along with it. Right. So what I've been trying to do instead with it is just take these little bite-sized concepts and just give just the amount of information in the little module that. Yeah. Rather than trying to do this video that you have to just sit there and watch for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And I just don't think that that's very productive as far as learning yeah. goes. Yeah. You and Josh address address that in a different one where he was talking about, I think, that heads project or whatever, that portraits uh, teaching oh, thing. Oh, uh-huh. Where someone was asking him, I don't know if it was, ex- it was for that particular course, but um, someone was asking was. him, like, put a full length video of you painting this. And he's like, you really want to watch me paint for like five hours? <laughs> like, right. yeah, yeah. You probably don't. You think you do, but you don't, you right. know? And the only way that that's helpful, at least in, as far as a class perspective, is if you're like literally copying every stroke, which you shouldn't do, <laughs> you know, obviously. I have um, I joined a watercolor painting online class recently. Mm-hmm. And and I kind of realized it's not for me because she's only teaching you to paint like her exact paintings. And right. it's like, I don't really have that desire to do that at this point in my art career to copy somebody's paintings and to learn how to copy their paintings. Like, that's not what I want to do, mm-hmm. even though I do feel like I could probably learn things from copying her paintings. That's true. But at the same time, it's just not for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I ha- well, I think there's an uh a good middle ground in there as far as teaching goes where uh, one thing that I did once was I taught my friend Jason, I was teaching him how to paint skin tones. And what I was doing was I was telling him exactly like the mixture of the colors and the ratio of colors together. Mm -hmm. And I think that can work for a certain amount like just to give you like a springboard for how to to go like say if you're trying to mix um, a flesh tone and Mm -hmm. you say like here's like uh, this mixture is 50 percent titanium white and like 30 percent yellow ochre and 20 percent alizarin crimson like you can mathematically break it down and be like, oh, okay, that's a, that's a good base to start with. And then mm. uh, you could say like, oh, here, I just added a little bit of Viridian to make it cooler here, or mm. cadmium orange to make it warmer. So like you can break it down in that way. But if you, if you're only looking at it visually and there's nobody telling you exactly what they're doing, it's like, well, that's not that useful. <laughs> like right. just to watch somebody mix color. Cause it's just like, oh, okay. Um, you're just 
watching them and not really understanding right. why they're doing that. It's actually, this is silly, but this is that's one of my biggest problems with Bob Ross. Yeah. Where he's just like, just take this color and this color and this color, but he doesn't really explain like <laughs> what like he's mixing so much. Right. You know? But um, is this your friend Jason with a cute cat? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so did shout he already? Out Jason. Yeah, shout out Jason. Did he already know how to paint skin tones like in his no. own way or? No, he never really painted in oils. Um, he mostly studied drawing when oh, he was in, okay. I see. When he would take art classes, yeah. So painting was something he always wanted to do, but um, he studied a little bit under um, this artist named Henry Asensio, but. He, from what I understood, he wasn't like a very patient or, or explanatory teacher. Mm, so he basically just had to like, kind of learn by osmosis for the most part and like get through the reluctant teaching. <laughs> of so, you, his. so you taught him like formally or were you just like advising him as a friend? No, I was just advising him as uh, a friend. Okay. Like there was a time where you're just like, oh, he's just like, can you show me? How to paint, right. <laughs> basically. Well, well, that's nice because it's like, that's like science, you know, like the yeah. different mixtures you would get to make certain colors. Mm -hmm. That's not, I feel like that's kind of hard when it comes to skin tones, too. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I could like look at a palette and in instinctively figure that out, you know? Right. So I feel like that's like scientifically <laughs> saying like what mixes you would use is yeah. really helpful from a teaching perspective, for sure. Or even like, even when you're painting like outdoors, Yeah. I notice, you know. In the past, before I knew anything about art, I might have thought of like, oh, that mountain is brown. But now I look at it and I'm like, no, that mountain is like light blue, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like how to observe exactly what you're seeing is like a huge thing <laughs> for me. And learning in your plein air course and just like seeing what colors you're really putting down for things. And you're like, the shadow on this mountain is dark green or something like that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I would have never even thought about that. <laughs> but it's like retraining your brain to like look at it correctly. Yeah, looking at everything as color shapes, basically, because that's mm -hmm. that's one of the main focuses on the part of the methods that I'm describing, like the whole like establish, compare, refine thing that I came up with. Yeah, like it's it's nothing too revolutionary. It's just an easy way to to describe what I'm doing there. But the whole establishment phase is just like finding all the big color shapes that make up like the jigsaw puzzle that is what you're looking at right the nice thing about that method establish compare refine it's like i feel like it's very instinctual to do it that way mm -hmm. um but to have someone like explain it and lay it out in steps like that is super helpful mm. um yeah <laughs> this is like a big sales pitch for surgery, of course. I know, I didn't mean it to me. That was exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Go to themainloop.com to download the six page PDF and stay yeah. tuned for the course. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't mean this to be an infomercial. But, uh, yeah, anyways. <laughs> this is our secret agenda. <laughs> yeah. No, just kidding. I'm sorry, guys. It's just what my brain has been consumed with. <laughs> well, it's days. true, though. This Fair is what Sergio has been working on. Like, we'll come to the studio at night and he'll be like working on this for like three hours in one form or another either mm -hmm. taping himself painting or um typing out the course or you know doing stuff in photoshop for like the graphics it's like it's been for weeks he's been working super hard on it so it's like it's understandable <laughs> well not to mention like uh most art shows are kind of up in the air a little bit right now too. oh yeah so and that, yeah, that's another main reason that it's lit the fire under my ass to to finish this <laughs> this course because it's like it's at least the one thing that artists can do right now is teach remotely. Mm -hmm. you, you can maybe sell remotely, but with that's people hard. not really, not only are they not spending, but they're advised not to spend on things like art. So it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> like what can you do? Well, one thing that they are advising is to spend money on learning new skills <laughs> yeah so gotta get camille in here and tell us how to sell during a quarantine <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> camille our, our sales beast <laughs> former guest shout out <laughs> camille, yeah. Corey, you're yeah. awesome okay sorry <laughs> right she's gonna be like walk into the facebook headquarters and shake them down and be like put me higher in the algorithm <laughs> it right feels like that would be something she would have no problem doing <laughs> yeah right just like yeah just do it come on <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you're an introvert me too but just go do this <laughs> right yeah just go tell them give me this much money yeah, anyway <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, you're an introvert, but, you know, you could hold a knife, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're an introvert, but you can sell, you know, a year's worth of income in a weekend because you're just an amazing salesperson, right? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> Not me. Um, but, you know, goals for sure. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. My whole way of selling has always just been like nudging people along on online. <laughs> right. right thing. And yeah, that's another thing we've been working on is doing the sort of daily painting thing and then I just putting them up in my paint trips thing. yeah yeah and that's been pretty good for you i think you've been selling yeah, about like decent. half of them yeah yeah and you know that's that's really nice i've been kind of following along except for i'm not selling them but <laughs> right. just um adding some content to my page trying to paint something from life every day or even if i i try to paint something from life every day but even if i don't at least like work on painting every single day which i've been pretty good about i think i've skipped a day or two here when i was like I don't know, feeling like super, super tired and just like went to sleep. I came to the studio and I was just like, I'm too tired to do anything. <laughs> but yeah, um, well, you actually have to wake up early. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm still working. So that's <laughs> yeah. nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, my my job was a little restructured, but I am still there. Um, <laughs> I work for a print company, if, if anybody doesn't know that. Um, yeah which is really actually pretty helpful for my art career. I get my art career, that's <laughs> my art hobby slash almost career. But, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> You're but, working on it, I yeah, think, kind well, of. <laughs> I don't know. I have a business for my jewelry side of my art. Well, that's but, true, yeah. Um, and I did have a, an art show a couple months ago, so that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in a couple group shows before, but that was my first real uh, art show. Um, that was, it was me and Emma Ambrose, my friend. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Had a lot of people come out and show their support, which was nice. Um, and yeah, that was the first time you felt like, oh, this is my show. <laughs> kind of. I thing. know. Yeah, totally. Um, so it was a weird feeling like, but it was a really nice uplifting feeling too. And maybe it was cause it was my first time. I mean, to you, it might be a little bit of old hat, but like, I thought it was going to be terrible cause I really hate like standing around like talking about my art and stuff I mean I don't really hate that actually I don't mind it at all but like I just felt like it was gonna be really awkward and but it wasn't you know like tons of my friends came and people I didn't even know came and they were super nice and super supportive and a couple of people did like actually want to talk about it and I was happy to do so at the time hmm. um I was just for uh, remembering the only time it got awkward was because of for me <laughs> oh yeah do we want to talk about that uh i'll talk around <laughs> it <laughs> we had a little bit of drama at my art show someone <laughs> came and wanted to start some some shit with sergio yeah <laughs> which is very i don't know someone sergio i was like, dealt with professionally <laughs> yeah <laughs> before Sergio yeah. was like the most mild-mannered person like ever <laughs> and especially like at that show so it was like absolutely shocking for somebody to come in and like start trying to like fight with him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um and chances it, are he didn't even remember doing any of it because he was right. just so he was very -faced. yeah yeah and this is actually waiting to dry related too. <laughs> yeah. just keep hinting just, yeah, we're just... not gonna say who it is or why but <laughs> right. <Connected laughs> yeah thoughts. so that was interesting and i had a friend there who like isn't part of the art world at all and we were trying to explain to him like what was happening oh was right like, yeah, yeah wow you had no idea there's so much drama going on surrounding it. yeah <laughs> but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was ridiculous but I, it was kind of entertaining but i felt really bad for you but luckily the people putting on the show shout out justin hollingsworth and james long mm -hmm. totally got the situation under control right yeah like, do not do this right now do not give sergio a hard time at his girlfriend's art show you know <laughs> handle this on your own time right um so shout out to those guys <laughs> awesome good for you good for you for being cool <laughs> right yeah <laughs> yeah it's just like why wait until then to even bring up an issue that you've right. had with me for well, like almost like a almost year. a year. Yeah. Well, he was surprised to see you, I think, because he yeah. came in and he's like, "Sergio's here. Ser Sergio's here." Like it was like <laughs> yeah. he, he broke in, something broke inside of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then he kept like staring at you. And then after he was told to stop messing with you, he just like sat right by you, like across from you, and was like staring at us. <laughs> right. So I was kind of like talking to you and trying to like shield a little bit and but then i think he would yeah he kept like making an issue um, right yeah yeah eventually we halfway talked it out which is really right good. i had to diffuse the situation myself a bit and then he finally stumbled away honestly with your overall demeanor in person like i feel like it would have been 
pretty bizarre if he kept trying to be all aggressive towards you because you were so just like, listen, listen, you know, <laughs> it's, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't want to start anything, you know, it's like if he had continued to kind of escalate it and you were just kind of being totally like pacifistic about it, I would have been kind of surprised. Mm -hmm. But he was so drunk. I mean, <laughs> he needed to be kicked out of there, which I think is, I don't know if he got kicked out. He didn't out. get kicked out, but he just like went over and found friends of it, or people he knew. Right. Just, yeah. And then so. hang out with them. So it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We've danced around this a lot here. <laughs> yeah. Can you figure out who yeah. it is? <laughs> the people who, this will be a game. who would know probably would figure it out. Yeah. Local, yeah. local Santa Rosa art scene can probably figure that one out. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> vague booking, vague casting. <laughs> vague cast, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> vague castle. <laughs> yeah. Vague castle podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> you just got hit with a classic waiting to try tangent <laughs> heck yeah is that a little echo some main loop magic uh -huh. <laughs> well maybe this is a good lead in we enlisted that same voice for our other podcast yeah um, a bit saucy yeah which is me and Sergio's new restaurant podcast <laughs> for sure yeah yeah we even have like a I made like its own soundboard for it too. You should give a little sampling here. Uh oh, here's one for a good um for a good restaurant. You just got into the clean plate club. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> do you have our theme song in here? Uh, I do not. Okay. No, unfortunately. We have a really fun, catchy theme song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll just have to find a bit saucy on their podcast apps to. To hear that sucker. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was We're just like <laughs> advertising all this. <laughs> I know, look at us. Our little business enterprise. <laughs> the yeah. Vanessa and Sergio business enterprise. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's been a lot of fun. We've recorded seven episodes. We've released one so far. And the <laughs> next one will come out next Friday. Um, and yeah, it's seven. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cars driving, which we recorded yesterday, was episode seven. I thought that was six. I think it might be six. Uh, so let's see, we did... First one was Bird and Bottle. Uh -huh. Second one Goss was Roads. Goss Roadside. Third one was San Diego. Uh -huh. uh, uh, oh, I then think we you're did, right. Yeah, <laughs> we did Acre Pizza, then Izakaya. Izakaya Kou. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad I didn't finish that graphic then because it would have been wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and like, oh, we have to record episode six just to make this graphic right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've been having a lot of fun with that. Um, we mm. both really like food. <laughs> yeah, we it, both love going to restaurants. Yeah, so. which unfortunately we can't do right now. But we're kind of like turning it a little bit to be about like the takeout offerings we can get. Mm -hmm. um, backyard and forceful. I live in forceful if you're wondering about all these forceful references. <laughs> but they have a, um, what is it? Chicken pot pie for two that comes with like two chocolate chip cookies and some <laughs> yeah. kind of side. So <laughs> yeah. I think it's like kind of interesting and relevant though to like sample different places takeout experiences. So, you know, maybe people like to know that. Right. Yeah, it's just like, oh, whatever size, but the chocolate chip cookies, that's what I'm after. I don't remember what the sides were. I just remember the cookies. Well, I remember the cookies kind of solidified, like, this is a full meal for two. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just like you're getting one item. And I got to say, $30 for a meal for two is not bad. That's pretty much what you would get around here. Like any, any place. And that's <laughs> any like place. a fancy like, restaurant. So. That's barely more than fast food around here these days. Exactly. Ugh. Yeah. It's just something. I'm, yeah. I'm remembering our meal, our last last review we had which was ugh, oh my god worse yeah. than fast food <laughs> <laughs> it really was yeah like it was like unquestionably worse than fast food yeah like hands down worse fries i've ever bought <laughs> uh oh are we tangenting into our other podcast <laughs> yeah. is this all of a sudden a bit saucy <laughs> you just got hit with it a bit saucy tangent <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to do that one soon <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but yeah i don't know we're just all over that place we're just babbling into that's this. the kind of episode this is <laughs> right yeah guys <laughs> <laughs> josh is just like why did i let this happen at all <laughs> it was his idea josh <laughs> right. this is all your fault <laughs> right it really is uh um, god where did we start from? I think it started with uh, your show and just like talking about the whole new experience of this being your your first art show. Yeah. The one that you had there. Yeah. Is this just something that you're planning on getting deeper into or, or you like to just, you know, kind of do local shows and keep it not too pressure filled on yourself? I don't know. I I have aspirations. Like at this point, I would do any show anybody like asked me to, but I'm not really like at a point where 
I feel like I like deserve that. Um, <laughs> but also, I don't know how you do this as an introvert, but I, I know art is kind of your, you know, your thing that makes you less introverted. Right. But the idea of like seeking out galleries and trying to get shows is pretty scary to me at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little hurdle for me to overcome. But I have a concept. Um, so we have a mutual friend named Jessamine, mm -hmm. who is a model. Mm -hmm. And she did a photo shoot um, where Sergio took the photos of, and she was wearing my jewelry. Yeah. And that was a really good time. We had a lot of fun. Um, but, I am, I'm prepaying her now because of the whole quarantine thing. Unfortunately, a lot of artists and models and people like that aren't really able to do their work. So I'm prepaying her during the quarantine for a concept I have in the future. So I really like flower photography and I like painting flowers a lot. So the concept was kind of like going to have these giant forests of flowers, basically. And she's going to be like a small figure among the flowers that I'm going to you know, use painting magic to make her a tiny little person. <laughs> right. So once this is all over and she can actually like do the modeling for it, um, yeah, this is going to be a fun concept I'm going to flesh out. And I'm hoping that like right now I'm pretty much just doing like straight up botanical paintings. I'm not getting much into like the imaginative or into the creative very much. Mm -hmm. um, so this I feel like I'm hoping this is going to be a step up for me um, once I get to flesh out this concept. And I feel like being at the studio, too, and having all the resources of the studio mm -hmm. is going to be really helpful for me to make that happen right um yeah it's um so once i make that happen and if it turns out well i don't want to be so presumptuous to think it's going to be like so great but if it turns out well um i'm hoping that body of work that i hopefully am able to make will be something i can like present to galleries or even mm -hmm. just like restaurants and stuff so yeah um yeah even though i think my little flower paintings i mean once this is all over it's it's hard to even think about it right now but like just places like cafes and stuff i feel like might be a good fit for my existing paintings and the ones i'm doing oh yeah absolutely like the ones that you did for the the local barrel show mm -hmm. um probably are better suited for a place like a cafe or something right. like that. I couldn't really see like a gallery opening that's just like, oh, here's a painting of a rose. <laughs> well, know? I more just mean like rather than a bar show. Like oh, it's super right. nice of them to, to have you um, show your work and all that uh, with you and Emma. But that work feels probably more out of place there than, right. than like, I don't know. Like when I think of bar shows, especially in Santa Rosa here, it's usually like... I don't know, kind of more on the pop culture side. Right. Like that seems to be what people gravitate towards well, around that, here. That particular bar has such a crazy mishmash of art. They're super cool and super chill about the shows. It was kind of just like... Um, you come hang your art, you get all of, like, the profits, you can take it down, you know, when you need to, you can use whatever you want to hang it up. Like, everything about it was, like, as chill as possible, which is awesome and amazing, especially for my first show. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you get all kinds of people hanging all kinds of art in there. So it's just kind of like a, mish, a mishmash that, mm -hmm. of what goes up in there. <laughs> right, yeah. um, Emma's first show, she did really well there. Mm -hmm. Um but she kind of, she has a really good, like, friends and family backing. Um, and I don't know. I kind of feel like when it's, like, mostly my friends being at my shows, it's like they don't want to pay $300 for a painting usually because we're all poor here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that's which I totally much. understand. I'm in the same boat. I would love to, like, buy my friends' paintings at the prices they deserve. But, you know, I'm just a poor person. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's when it comes to art shows. Pretty much any artist can probably relate to this where when you walk into the reception and it's all artists, you're like, oh, it's going to be a fun time, but nothing's going to sell. Right. We had a similar experience at, um, I had a great time, but towards the beginning of this whole coronavirus thing, before like lockdown was in place or anything like that, we went to a show at Modern Eden. Oh, right. Yeah. You actually did a painting of me, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. um, but... I think it was a 75 artist group show yeah. and everybody there, like literally every single person was either an artist or like their 
partner or spouse. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. everybody there. Mm-hmm. So it was just like like four paintings sold or something like that was out of 75. <laughs> right. <laughs> because everybody was just there to like see each other's stuff and their own stuff and all that. And it was fun. But at the same time, yeah, not a lot of sales happening. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it was right when the whole coronavirus thing was right. really starting to ramp up in San Francisco. Like they got the the shelter in place recommendations to do that like a week before everybody was mandatory right they did yeah so everybody was already staying inside so like i think i don't know if any, everybody anticipated it being like a mandatory shutdown of everything but it almost felt like for the artists it was a little bit of like a i just need to get out of the house for this right, one last time right. before, before <laughs> i remember can't anymore I was super excited to meet the gallery owners and I shook her hand and she's like, are we shaking hands? Are you sure? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, we were like, coming for a little Santa Rosa. We weren't quite shelf, used to it yeah. yet. Sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> but, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we weren't quite used to it. And I'm like, oh, no, I didn't even think about that at the time. Yeah. Now, now, thinking about it now, it's like, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? But at the time, I was just like, oh, I guess I shouldn't shake her hand. <laughs> like, right, yeah. <laughs> I felt like the bad guy. <laughs> totally. All, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't even a thing we were thinking thinking about at the time but like yeah now it's all like elbows at most <laughs> <laughs> the foot the foot shake yeah, foot yeah. Shake, yeah. <laughs> even though I feel weird doing it. I just like wave at people yeah <laughs> me and my friend uh Nick uh we go to for walks but we like are super careful to stay six feet apart we'll do like an air high five from like mm-hmm. six feet away <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but yeah I don't know Things are so crazy right now. I don't think anybody expected it to be as crazy as it is at the moment. Yeah, gallery shows have been postponed indefinitely. Pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a show that was scheduled for, for May, and that's being bumped f- till June. And then it's like, oh, it might be bumped another month, depending right. on what... Uh, what the governor says here in California. Right. So not to mention, weird. yeah, the uh, we were supposed to go to the Carmel uh, Plain Air Festival. I don't mm-hmm. know what's it. What is that Carmel what Art Festival? Carmel but Art I don't know Festival. why they call it that. Yeah, so, I, I they wasn't going to mention Plain yeah. Air at all. <laughs> Sergio was going to paint, and I was just we were just going to camp together. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was going to be a lot of fun. I was really looking forward to it, but unfortunately, now it's been moved to September, mm-hmm. um, which I guess is kind of a good thing because now we're not like worrying about it so much like hopefully by that time it'll like be able to happen but at the same time it's a bummer (laughs) and (laughs) who knows like what's going to happen with other planar festivals like we're going to go to the uh, pacific northwest one in august where Mm -hmm. we're also going to paint and who knows if that's going to happen yeah my fingers are crossed that are like i'm i'm fairly certain that that will still go on i just don't see things being shut down for that long although i don't know it's hard to say with like museums taking on these like extra things right now right where they might need to like cut some things out of the budget that they can't afford to do even if they're still open but right. who knows? Yeah, it's hard to say. A lot of what worries me is things getting like continually pushed back. So it's like things will kind of be like stacked against each other. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we couldn't do anything for two months. So now we have to do this now. And now we have to push this to then. And then we have to, it's like everything's just a mess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but hopefully that, that trip will still happen. Um, hopefully by then it'll be okay. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> I have shockingly never seen the Columbia Gorge, even though I've been in that area a hundred <laughs> times. I have never been to Columbia Gorge. I've crossed the Columbia River, and while I was crossing it on a bridge coming north of going north of Portland, I saw Hood Mountain, which was awesome. But mm-hmm. I really want to spend some time in Columbia Gorge. So hopefully Pacific Northwest Plain Air Festival still happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those things right now that we're missing the most. It's just the opportunity to move around and be adventurous around here exactly one of our favorite things to do together is just be out and about and find places to go (laughs) it's mostly how we even ended up as a couple (laughs) we used to do stuff like that together all the time yeah just as friends even just as friends and we kind of realized that (laughs) we enjoy the same things and like each other so that's (laughs) and the rest is history (laughs) (laughs) but i keep saying like 
you know, everything else is fine, but give me back my parks. I want my parks back. Even though, you know, I understand why, but at the same time, it's like, that's what drives me the most crazy for sure, is not being able to, like, go outside places. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a weird, abrupt sort of change of, of uh, policy about it, because at first, I think you said that before, that parks were free for a while right but everybody was just like oh we finally can get to do something for free so let's have so everybody's gonna go swarm the, too the many parks. people went i can't mm-hmm. really fault anybody though because it's like you can't like, like pe- what else can you do people aren't just gonna be like oh other people are at the park so i'm not gonna go you know because like <laughs> people don't know what other people's plans are mm-hmm. but it was also happened to be like a absolutely gorgeous weekend too that particular weekend mm-hmm. but Yeah, it sucks. I wish it could be, like, somehow regulated. Like, oh, you can go to the park, but, you know, only this many people can get in or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But, well, hopefully we get to a point soon where the parks can at least be open and outdoor stuff can be open, you know? I've heard that, like, sports games and stuff might be postponed for a long time, um, which is understandable. Like, we had Giants tickets, me and my mom, um, but it's just, like... That's a stadium of 40,000 people. Mm -hmm. Like, that just seems like the worst possible thing imaginable to do, (laughs) you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the way they're talking about it being, like, um, in the fall, it could come back. Like, even if it's a, um, what do you call it? Like, if it's subsided enough for, for normal life to continue through the summer. If it flares up again in the fall, are we going to have to shelter in place again? It's right. Like, well, I don't mean, know if they'll actually do it to this extent again, but they're definitely not going to let stadiums full of thousands right. of people congregate. It makes sense because it's like if people um, if people are allowed to go places, they will, and then it'll get like you know spread again. So hopefully, it won't be like as bad. But at the same time, you know. It makes sense that once people are allowed to go places, they will, and then they'll touch Mm -hmm. things. And then, you know, yeah, that's how it'll go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I do miss, like, there's just little things that you take for granted at this point now. It's like, we just went to get some energy drinks at the uh, gas station before coming here. Uh And one thing I noticed was like, oh, it's actually like not rude at all not to hold the door open for anybody right now good point yeah (laughs) oh i'm not actually supposed to be polite right now (laughs) (laughs) there you go you have an excuse (laughs) yeah well there's little like the other day i had to facetime uh, my friend emma because i was just like gosh i just like haven't seen people and like Mm -hmm. for the longest time I was okay with it because I was like, this is my time. Because a lot of times I'll like overextend myself and I'm kind of like, this is my time to like just hunker down and do art and actually like really kind of like start from almost scratch and relearn to paint. That's kind of been my goal. And I was like, so I've been enjoying that actually and not having too hard of a time. I already work at home. I've done it for years. So it's like my life isn't really that different except for, you know, the parks thing. Um, and now I don't have like as many social obligations. I have almost none. <laughs> but right. at the same time, it finally hit me after like six weeks of this that I was just like, wow, I'm actually starting to like, get a little bummed out about all this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, even us introverts have feelings. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> we have feelings, too. <laughs> well, we could touch on a little bit. Um, how I've been, well, not how, but what's been motivating me to learn from pa- to paint from life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is our friend Heather, mm-hmm. um, Heather Ean Martin, mm-hmm. um, who has is a former guest of this show, yeah. has a Facebook group um, called The Art Refuge. And um, I have been a member of Facebook groups before, and I normally just don't even pay attention to them. But yeah. this one actually has a lot of good engagement. Um, she posts little challenges that are really well crafted for like learning to paint. So even if someone's like a total complete beginner, I feel like they'd be perfectly fine in this group just learning. Um, and she really like before. I was, like, really intimidated by painting from life, just thinking, like, I couldn't do it. But your plein air course and learning about a little bit kind of, like, got that started. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I really saw the value of it. Like, I'd ask you questions like, what's the point of, like, 
if you're painting from plain air, do you think the viewer knows, you know, and stuff like that? Like, I'd ask you questions like that, like, kind of trying to, like, wrap my brain around it. But now I finally, like, feel like I get it, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just, like... Um, so, yeah, she pushed Little Tones as, like, oh, paint this painting with a big brush or paint mm -hmm. something in a medium you've never used before. Right. Um, which I did gouache. Mm -hmm. I painted a little chili pepper and gouache, <laughs> and then I realized I like gouache, and I bought a bunch of gouache. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be here on Friday, but now I'm getting it tomorrow instead because UPS screwed up, which is a bummer. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm going to be doing some gouache painting. I'm, like, looking around the studio being, like, what can I paint in gouache <laughs> tomorrow? <laughs> I think you were talking about painting some of the, the uh, fake flowers the fake I have. Flowers, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got a huge box of big so <laughs> right. that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's been fun for me, too, because um, it just kind of created this new sort of little mini venture for me that I've been doing. With, yeah. uh, it was her first challenge ever was paint um, food in a medium you don't, don't normally use. Mm. And at the time, I was really using a lot of oil paint. Uh, I'd been using, I, and I did gouache and colored pencil. <laughs> so I think the original thing I wanted to do was just all in color pencil. It's like, that nah, I forever. don't care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> he painted an in and out burger. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very well received and it sold yeah. immediately. Uh, it's yeah. Great it if did. you could sell these little challenges we're doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, that's helped me get into this little practice of, nearly daily painting at this yeah. point so uh using her little challenges and then that just springboarded me into just doing more of those challenges over and over again and mm -hmm. um not just doing the, the her challenges but just keep on doing the theme of painting food that uh either is nostalgic for me or, or just looks fun to right. paint. Well, it's it's fun. I feel like it strikes a nerve with people because like mm -hmm. they'll see a food they like and they'll be like, oh, I want that. Right. And like your paint drips are reasonably priced and accessible for like the layman, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely priced for quarantine <laughs> purposes. Mainloop.com <but laughs> slash paint drips. <laughs> yeah. So I like that. Is, it, is that right? Uh, yeah. It's the mainloop.com slash the paint, main loop. paint dash Not drips. Just main loop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I posted the In N Out Burger on Reddit, and that's been kind of fun to see the, the engagement it's got on there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's gotten good engagement. It got, got actually really good engagement on your page, too. It did. Yeah. yeah. That, I think that's the most likes I've gotten on Instagram this year so far. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> and uh, on Reddit, it's got like 700 upvotes. But it's funny, some of the comments that I've gotten. And like there's there's been mostly positive comments. There was some person who was just like, why are you shilling for that Republican corporation in it? <laughs> yeah, where's Sergio's in and out money if he's shilling for them? <laughs> right, like They exactly. should be paying you like thousands of dollars <laughs> for, for doing their advertising. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. People, I realize people are kind of harsh on Reddit. Mm -hmm. Like just today I was looking at the in and out burger and I found someone posted nine days ago one of Sergio's old paintings from like years ago mm -hmm. um, and it had 4,500 likes. Yeah. But of course the comments are like her neck looks weird like <laughs> and all this stuff like that. Right. And it's just like, wow, people are rude on Reddit. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot totally. of times people are just scrolling by and they'll just like upvote, upvote, upvote and not really like engage, which kind of oh, seems sure, to yeah. be like what's happening. So if people like actually stop to make a comment, it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Both the, the gift and the curse of Reddit is that you can post things anonymously and comment in a somewhat anonymous manner. Like you're just basically this name. There's not even a picture to go with you. And mm -hmm. if you click on that name, you can maybe see what other comments the person has made, but it's not really, you're not really getting a sense of a real person <laughs> either way. Right. Like both as the, the viewer and the, the commenter. So it gives you a way to both comment unfiltered like without feeling like you need to hold back but also there's those things like as the person whose work is getting commented on sometimes those those honest critiques are a little 
little, <laughs> they can be a little stinging, maybe. Right. People don't care about like your feelings at all because they don't see you as like a person. Whereas on Instagram, it's like someone's actually looking at your like page of all your work as opposed to just like some random photo that they're just randomly seeing. So. Yeah. It's funny when they talk about like if they comment on something you posted, but they talk about you like you're not the person there <laughs> like right. like um like for example if some if i posted a, a that painting of the burger and someone wrote like he didn't paint this right like on my page it's like who's he i'm i'm he <laughs> yeah you're he <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i'd like to see them do a better job <laughs> right. i think that in that burger looked great yeah i didn't really get i i yeah. got i didn't get critiques on the painting of uh, of it but it's just like the subject matter it's like all right well i'm the subject isn't always going to be your cup of tea so right. whatever <laughs> oh right and well that's kind of a thing with the the junk food paintings too where it's just like oh here's mcdonald's fries like you might get some like weird warrior who's like you shouldn't be advertising unhealthy eating habits <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 that's great um at my work at, there was a time where we were floating the idea of printing photos on cookies oh and mm -hmm. one of our former employees who I will not name, um, <laughs> got really mad because he thought we were like promoting obesity oh, God. by making cookies. I can't imagine those cookies would actually be any good, like <laughs> the taste of them. <laughs> that like someone would eat so many of them that it would actually like make them obese. But, you know. You're actually discouraging obesity by making cookies that <laughs> taste Yeah, <bad. laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're good. I don't want to knock whatever company <laughs> right, printed yeah. cookies that was. But I can't imagine that actual cookie quality would be the focus of a cookie you print a photo on <laughs> but right um or the quality of the actual print either yeah that's true <laughs> um but yeah he got like super mad about it and he was just like with all we know about sugar consumption there we shouldn't be promoting this so i can see some like yeah exactly it, especially if your like stuff that. is like going viral there's going to be some people who are going to be like weird about that <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah it's like somebody could <laughs> turn around and like go the health angle of it too like a burger like that has 465 calories and this is not good for your children to eat like i think it's more than that but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm sure it is but probably yeah. so yeah you're promoting the uh, diabetes <laughs> epidemic or right, something yeah, like that something like how that. dare you sergio you made my grandmother go blind <laughs> <laughs> right yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, Due to your gouache painting, my grandma lost her toe. It's like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we, um, yeah, oh, yeah. So last Sunday, mm -hmm. we spent, I, I discovered Sergio had never baked a cake before in his <laughs> 36 years of existence <laughs> um so i was just like we need to bake a cake together and then you can paint it um and i'm gonna make it pretty because i briefly had a job as a cake decorator mm -hmm. um but this was not quite up to the quality of my cake decorator <laughs> work <laughs> well i had a i was the assistant of a cake decorator i mm -hmm. should say so he would do most of the grunt work um when i actually did that professionally but mm -hmm. that was a really hard job you had to stay up till like two in the morning making cakes because you couldn't do it ahead of time but anyway tangent um I we I spent all day making this cake for Sergio to paint, and I was thinking we we're going to bake it together, but I kind of went into, like, work mode, mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, I have to do this, and I have to do this. <laughs> honey, can you hand me that? Okay. Right. <laughs> well, I don't call him honey. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then it was, like, midnight by the time you actually were painting the cake. <laughs> Yeah, close to. Or I think you went home at like midnight, so you painted it at like ten. I went home or like at one. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But that that painting <laughs> turned out pretty cool. Yeah, still so. available at the main loop. <laughs> <duck. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you need to remember, ask. guys. I'm not the one promoting this. <laughs> no, <laughs> my own stuff. Yeah, <laughs> introvert through and through. <laughs> Somebody else promote it for me. <laughs> there you go. That's why I'm on here. No, right. I'm yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> he paid me for this to pretend <laughs> exactly. like. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I need money. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's very relevant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to bring up r slash choosing beggars. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Speaking of Reddit, to introduce this, there's a mm -hmm. subreddit called r slash choosing beggars. And mm -hmm. it's all about people who, um, well, it's 
it goes it covers very many many categories like babysitting and you know a lot of different like things like that but art is a major thing um and so is photography where people are just like will you draw me mm-hmm. and someone will be like sure here are my commission prices and they'll be like can't you do it for free smiley face and then they'll just be like no i have to pay my bills and then the customer will be like let's well, screw you your art sucks anyway <laughs> you know and there's like hundreds of stories like in that vein mm-hmm. <laughs> um I have like a what is it like a guilty pleasure of watching um, Reddit videos like dramatically enacted on YouTube. It's like a whole huge genre of YouTube that's like people dramatically reading Reddit posts in r slash choosing beggar is a is a major one. Mm. <laughs> and the customer will always have this voice like, "Can't you do it for free?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, me using that voice is going to make everybody unsubscribe. So sorry, <laughs> sorry, waiting to dry. <laughs> but um. Do you want to pause it and find some stories? Sure. Okay. We'll be back. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You dork. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we are here to present you with... And now for another edition of Waiting to Dry Audio Theatre. Presented by Vanessa Walsh <laughs> and Sergio <Sergio-Lopez>. Lopez. <laughs> Custom main loop action there. <laughs> I know. Look at you. You're prepared. What did you do that today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> we didn't have that much time between like deciding to do this and actually do it. So right. It's pretty pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Sergio is a pro <laughs> audio editor. Right. The main loop. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Services, yeah. yeah. Not for free. No, uh, yeah. no. So You'll be shamed like we're about to do with these people. <laughs> yes. So this will be a dramatic reading, as as well as we could do that, <laughs> yeah. of r slash choosing beggars. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> Which, is going to be fun, guys. <laughs> yeah. Jerks who think they deserve art for free. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Should I start? Yeah. Start off with, the, with this monologue here. <laughs> okay. Well, the first one is an Instagram comment. Oh, no. It looks like a Reddit comment, probably on r slash art um uh, so it goes like this i like the style but i can't photograph myself hello if you want to make money don't become an artist in quote because real people do not spend money on (laughs) art especially during a crisis you should be using your skill to make a difference in someone's life right now and not try to put money in your own wallet i made pottery for four years and no one ever felt sorry for me (laughs) and pottery is actually useful in all caps seriously it should be a crime to try and make money from something (laughs) (laughs) it should be a crime to make money from something like art during a national emergency so as a painter, I'm not only am I fake, but I'm useless as well. You should. You are also committing a crime <laughs> when you try to sell art during a national emergency. Wow. Come, <laughs> yeah. Come at me, cops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We don't feel sorry for pottery makers. <laughs> <laughs> come at me. Policy enforcers. <laughs> <laughs> Real people. So I guess all the people that bought your art during this crisis are... Ghosts. There are ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I sent them all to the fake addresses as well. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> God. Yep. All right. So there's that one. All right. So next one will be um, wants logo design for free, claims he is not asking anything for free. So I'll start. So I'm starting a new clothing line and need someone who could maybe do me up a little sketch so I can get an idea or what the logo will look like will definitely be buying in the next couple of weeks. Just need to get an idea or logo. Please message me. And then you take that sketch and get it printed. That's not nice. What do you mean? I haven't even got the clothes yet. I mean, you're trying to get the service for free. What's that got to do with anything? I'm not trying to get anything for free. Yeah. So basically <laughs> they want someone to draw a logo for free. And then take that sketch and get it printed for right. free. Not Classic. pay for that. <laughs> Classic service. scam. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Next one is the influencer who yeah. wants the work for exposure. <laughs> right. So you start with this one. Uh huh. Hey, your manager was messaging me earlier, telling me that you're looking for a hand drawn portrait. Yeah. When can you start? Because I need this ASAP. Listen, if you're sleeping right now, can you just draw my most recent post really quickly? 
Sorry for the late reply. I was writing an email. I'll get on it right away. Keep in mind it'll be pencil only. Is that all right with you? Yes, I guess that's okay. Just get it done quickly. Sorry, but I couldn't get your manager to sign the invoice I sent. Can you get your signature on it, please? After that, I can get started right away on it. There's no need for an invoice. There's no need for me to pay you. I have over 240,000 followers. Once they see the work you put into your hopefully brilliant portrait, (laughs) you'll be able to really get your name out then. Don't you agree? The fact that you're asking me to pay you for what is essentially a glorified promo post is quite bizarre. It's only 10 euro. Your manager agreed to pay. I'm not asking for much here, just payment. I think you fail to realize how dispensable you are to me. I'll find (laughs) another artist if you don't want to work with me. Final chance. No, sorry. I can't sacrifice my integrity for exposure. (laughs) <laughs> good <laughs> yeah. good for you yeah uh, dirty yeah. secret about the exposure it'd probably get you like 20 followers at most maybe right yeah we've actually talked about this a couple times like a couple times uh even my own art accounts with like you know over a hundred thousand followers will share my stuff and it'll get me like nothing <laughs> right <laughs> you know? yeah so yeah yeah especially if it's a story share that almost never translates to anything. Right. You've had some success with like magazines and stuff sharing your sharing your art, but Yeah, but that's usually when they share to their main feed. Right, but they're not like making you do the art for free. <laughs> so right, they can no, do they're that. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, it's work that I've already done and then they'll share it with me and then I'll get like a couple hundred uh, followers out of it so yeah i mean that's great cause, that's great yeah, yeah. but that's like they get content for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a win-win there they get content for their feed and then i get followers so exactly anyway no money needed to be exchanged that's a, that's not that the same situation as <laughs> <No>. this <laughs> okay next that's, one <laughs> yeah asking for money and getting exposure instead that's not how it works no so the next one is the castle. So they send a picture of a bunch of map icons that looks like for a video game. Mm-hmm. Can I use this for my map games? No, these are copyrighted by me, not public domain. They're free for personal use, but not for publishing. So what do I have to do to take it? Pay you? If you want to license them for commercial use, we can absolutely arrange that. I usually charge 100 euro per illustration for that. Ha, you're joking. 100 euros for this shit? Are you homeless? I will report your account and block you. Oh, my God. (laughs) It's funny when they're like, I'll block you. Like, oh, I'm scared. Right, yeah. (laughs) I really want to talk to you more. (laughs) Yeah. You mean you won't ask me for free things anymore? Yeah, wow, what a loss. You won't even be allowed to do it? (laughs) Yeah. Thank you for saving me from yourself. (laughs) The one thing I wish you did for your reading of it is if you read the, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I know I couldn't do it. <laughs> you there can you edit that in. Use <laughs> <Yeah>. your magic. <laughs> May loop magic. Or just use your uh, yeah, <laughs> into <that's> mine. <laughs> yeah. That might be confusing. <laughs> just layer both of ours on top You're of each right. other. And it's like ah. <laughs> uh, echoes and reverb and everything to it. Yeah. <laughs> do that. <laughs> well. Okay. Next is the car one. Oh God. Yo, what's up, brother? How you been? Hey, really sorry. Who's this? From the New Year's Eve thing at what's his name's house. <laughs> oh yeah, my bad. I forgot to add your name to the contact. What's up? I saw on your Instagram that you draw. Do you do any art for friends and stuff? I have before. Yeah, I'm super busy these days, so not as much. I have an Etsy shop that you could look at if you want to buy something. Bro, I really want a drawing for my room like this. And it's a picture of a of a car in like five different panels. It's just like a Lamborghini or something like that. I mean, like I said, I've gotten super busy, so I can only paint off and on. All the pieces I have are online if you look me up. Also, I'm not sure that's a painting, by the way. It looks suspiciously like Photoshop. Dude, just make this one for me. You know me, so it's like for family (laughs) even though they've only met once even if i had the time that piece would take weeks to make it would also be expensive between the canvases and the paint bro come on how hard can it be you have to think about other poeple too not just your (laughs) slef i can post a picture of it online and people will come and buy from you more Okay, two things. First, you know there's like a meme online about people asking for free stuff and promoting exposure as payment? Second, what? I am told I told you I'm busy. It's not personal. There's plenty of artists on Etsy that take commissions. 
Yeah, but that probably costs more than if you just did it. You're being selfish. What's his name told me you gave her one for free? Yeah, for her birthday over the summer. And it was way smaller than what you want. What, Ver? You probably just can't make it, Biakus. You're not good enough and you're just trying to find an excuse. Okay, I don't have time for this right now. I hope you have a good night. Come on, man. Just do it for me. You're so annoying. I know you're only doing this, Biakus. You're not good enough. <laughs> Come on, bro. Please, it will look so cool in my room. You're a piece of trash and your art sucks. Hey, you changed my mind. I'll do it for you totally free. Yo, thank you, my guy. Oh, is this guy from, from New York? I've been doing the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is my guy a New York thing? <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. Yo, thank you, my guy. How soon can you have it done? <laughs> I could come pick it up for you if you want. <laughs> I love it when you do accents. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'll even throw in $20 because I'm so sorry I tried to blow you off. You're a real one. How soon? I'll finish it tonight. I'm dropping all of my other priorities. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. What the hell? It's been less than an hour. <laughs> what can I say? I work fast when I'm motivated. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> it's just like scribbles. It's like, like a <laughs> really shitty, like, hand-drawn thing that took like five minutes. Although it is still in perspective, the car. <laughs> I know, right? They actually did all right. <laughs> yeah. This guy got their money's worth. <laughs> okay. Are you joking? I meant a real drawn, a big one. You're so stupid. It looks like trash anyway. I guess you're actually the warrost artist I've ever seen. I hope you die. <laughs> Waste of my time, idiot. <laughs> Quality human being right there. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Ready for the last one? Sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is this still available? Hello? <laughs> yes. What would you like to commission? You see, my daughter just lost her little bunny. The neighbor's dog killed him and she's really sad. There's nothing to distract her from the pain of losing her best friend. She's only eight. Sweet little girl. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I would be more than happy to do a portrait of the bunny. I would need reference pictures as a start. Payment is due up front and the commission will be sent to you in two to three days. Let me know. Thank you. With the coronavirus going on, I can't pay right now. I'm wondering if you could do it for free. We're all going through rough times, and doing one for free for a little girl won't hurt you at all. It's not much, so it won't be a huge loss on your part. I'm so sorry to hear that, but I'm currently not offering my services for free. I was laid off and need to buy medication and lots of other essentials. My prices are this low currently because I'm trying to get enough to get my medications. It's not a lot to you, but it's a lot for me. These paintings take me a few hours each, so I'd be working minimum wage for them. I'm so sorry for your loss. Everyone is in quarantine, so I don't understand why can't, you can't do one for free for a little girl. I'm disgusted by people like you in this type of crisis. You can never help the needy ones unless you're getting paid. <laughs> Hope you get corona, you greedy, selfish cunt. Your family, too. Your art is ugly. Disgusting. You're probably one of the people that bought all the toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Fuck you. <laughs> I would love to get coronavirus and go cough on people like you. My daughter will grow up to be a doctor someday and hope one day you won't regret putting a smile on her face. Hope people won't go up to her and ask her to work for free. Bye, weird lady. <laughs> she will have a real job saving lives and not trying to rob people for art. Quotes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How long did that take to learn? One to two weeks? And you want people to pay? You should be doing it your part during this pandemic and make people's days. You think people will buy art right now? What a joke. Like I said, I hope you and all the other greedy motherfuckers get corona. <laughs> you have all the time in the world right now to do one illustration for free. You heartless. <laughs> You're a very inconsiderate asshole. Oh, one one little detail I just noticed was that so that the second to last message was sent at one oh nine PM. The next one was sent at twelve ten AM. The oh last my gosh. one. <laughs> so it was like the next day. <laughs> she just she was like stewing in it. Oh, there's more. Oh really? Your art is crap. I hope you receive bad karma. Really praying no one buys for you. What the actual fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it ends. All right. Well, this. <laughs> well, well, let's see what Sergio's up to here. This was another edition of Waiting to Dry Audio Theater. <laughs> now kindly bugger off. 
Oh, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> um, well, I hope you don't mind our horrible acting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, people suck. That's the conclusion they can come to yeah. <laughs> based on that. <laughs> yeah. Corona, corona or not, people still try and get shit off of you for free. <laughs> or for exposure. <laughs> for exposure, yeah. <laughs> the worst. Yeah. I kind of feel like that subreddit was like started because of artists. I guess there's a lot of photographers on there, too. Um, I've seen ones for photographers that it was like, you pay me to shoot our wedding because it's like going to be good practice for you and oh, stuff God. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that shit is hard. Like, it's not an oh, easy job gosh. at all. <laughs> yeah. I th I've told you before. One time I was um, the assistant for my friend who's a wedding photographer and it was crazy hard work. <laughs> like it was like the whole day and you're almost like running the wedding in certain ways because you've got to get everybody like into place like at all times and get them like photo worthy and even when they're like walking down the aisle you're like having to like be up in their face like behind them and mm -hmm. stuff like that it is so weird and awkward and I ended up having to have a very uncomfortable interaction with the groom because he was trying to like barge in while the bride was changing and it was oh, my right. job to keep him out <laughs> and um <laughs> Because um, the photographer's taking pictures of her, like, getting ready. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, you know, we don't have time for this. And tried to, like, push past me. And it was, like, this whole drama. It's like, wow, you've got to be all up in family's drama to do that job. It is hard. And then you have to, like, edit for hours and hours and hours. Now that I do photography, I really know how much work that is, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And I don't even do the amount of work, I'm sure, photographer, like, real photographers, too, <laughs> even close. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's something we haven't even talked about yet. Is our, your new venture into photography, oh, yeah. macro photography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, sir, this was actually Sergio's suggestion that I start doing photography because I. Well, you'd been doing a lot of iPhone, iPhone, iPhoneography. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing yeah iPhone photography for a while now, just because I like to go on hikes and I really love flowers. Mm -hmm. I haven't picked up on my from my art yet <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that I really love flowers. Um, so I'll take pictures of them a lot and. Sergio has this particular Canon camera that he uses for, like, everything in his art. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I also take a lot of landscape photos, too, which are fun because I like to hike a lot. And he was just like, I think this would suit you really well for, like, photography. So I ended up, I think, with my bonus from work buying a camera, mm -hmm. um, which is the same as yours, but a little bit like the newer version. Mm -hmm. And... I got a macro lens as well. So I've been taking a lot of like macro flower pictures and it's a lot of fun. Like on our road trip down to San Diego, we stopped in like some dirt lot off the I-5 and I ended up with like, yeah. like some really beautiful photos of just these <laughs> tiny flowers that were in this dirt lot. Yeah. It's really fun. You can totally get lost in it. I feel like when I go on walks with people when I bring my camera, unless it's like you, <laughs> I can be right, really annoying yeah. sometimes because I'm just like, you stop for 20 minutes because I saw this like one tiny flower on the ground <laughs> right, yeah. and there's a bug on it and I have to get the bug in focus so I'm like laying on the ground in the dirt like for like five minutes trying to like get this bug in focus but it's a lot of fun I really like the results the only thing that I get hung up on is like like I just said like the amount of time and work editing is mm -hmm. which is a lot um and I find that it reminds me a little bit of like updating my website <laughs> for my art where sure. it's just like okay I did the fun part of taking the photos or of making the art but now I have to do the work part of editing them or putting them on my website or whatever it's kind of like that like this isn't the part the fun part that I like to do um, but I'm starting to get used to it I'm starting to get into a little bit of a workflow it's just a matter of like setting aside the time I've been on such a painting kick recently I don't know if this happens to you maybe not because you're like an actual professional artist <laughs> but I'll get on kind of like a kick of something like okay I like I'm really into painting now I'm really mm -hmm. into beading now I'm really into this now and I'm always like to some degree like still interested in all of the different aspects of the art I do but I'll like focus on one thing and get like momentum on it and get excited about it mm -hmm. and I'll just want to like do that all the time so like derailing that so I can like spend a whole day editing photos is something I have trouble with but it is something I need to be better about you're really good about managing your time because you've been a professional for so long it definitely took me a long time to get to that point where I was able to do that better than I than I used to I mean I, I definitely feel like there's a lot of different things I could do to be more productive still But yeah, it's another thing. It just takes a lot of time and practice and 
necessity, really. <laughs> right. That's a whole skill in itself is just like your time management, mm-hmm. you know, because at first when I first started drawing before I like had the idea to make it a business, I would draw and then people would be like, I want to buy that. And I'd be like, OK. And it's like, this is so great. I'm just going to draw things for funding and to sell them. And that's going to be my little art business. And so that was like such a massive amount of naivety mm-hmm. <laughs> in that <laughs> thought that like you you really have to like work hard and you have to like do things you don't want to do, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, and in our Facebook group, The Art Refuge today, Heather um, posted something interesting, which was... Um, you have to paint even when you don't feel like painting or otherwise. Oh, uh-huh. The whole like inspiration versus like. Yeah. Yeah. Versus just yeah. putting the work in. Totally. And it's just like, I agree with that. And there are so many times I don't paint when I don't feel like painting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I should. I should do it anyway. But I've been good lately about painting every day. At least painting like something every day. <laughs> so at least I do that. But... I think it's partly, though, it's not just like I don't feel like it because I'm being lazy. It's more like I don't feel like it and I have a hundred other things to do. (laughs) Right. You know, so that's what makes it kind of hard. But I mean, this quarantine thing is a little helpful because I'm not juggling a social life in addition to the (laughs) rest of everything I have. So even though I feel like I've overextended myself in the amount of projects I've started, I have like so many like half finished paintings going around right now, as you've seen. Mm. Well, <laughs> but, that's another secret for me is that I don't have a social life <laughs> outside of you. <laughs> well, not right now, yeah. <laughs> but you, I mean, you do to some degree. You, know, <laughs> you, you have plague of crows. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. There is, yeah. Missing my bearing time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely for me also, um, It's just getting over that hump of starting, Mm, like no matter what it is I'm doing, whether it's, um, whether it's painting, I'll sometimes just get into modes where it's something I'm actually, I actually want to do, but for some reason, just that inertia of like getting over the thing, it it just keeps me from doing it sometimes. And I'll just like, just distracted. And sometimes I'll actually do something else that I need to do, but Mm -hmm. it's a, it's almost like. I think every artist can um, relate to like trying to clean up the studio or, oh, or yeah. like their space <laughs> before actually starting, even though they know they need to start, they actually want to start. But for some reason, there's just like this little blockage that you just need to get over. Oh, totally. Yeah. Well, the other day you came up to me while I was in the studio working and you're like, what are you working on? And I'm like, oh, well, I have I'm re- started this really complicated beading project. And I had like oh. half an inch of it done. It was like uh-huh. barely anything. And it was just like... Um, it doesn't seem like I did much, but the fact that I started it and I actually like picked out all my mm-hmm. colors that I'm using and got all my beads separated and got my pattern laid out and like actually got the start of it done is such a huge thing mm-hmm. as far as like actually getting the rest of it done for me. Um, Cause like once the project is started, it's like I can just go in and work on it, you know, and it makes such a huge difference from when I didn't start it at all. Even if the amount of actual work I did, isn't that much, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Right. <laughs> so I yeah. felt like somewhat accomplished because I started that project. <laughs> yeah. I could totally relate to that. Cause like, I'm never like, Oh, I wish I didn't paint today. <laughs> it's always the point. opposite. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, I never think about that, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So I was, I felt like I was good today cause I did two, little um <laughs> outdoor studies it's yeah. still plain air right if it's outside yeah okay yeah so there are two little plain air <laughs> plant studies in my yard mm-hmm. and neither of them were very good <laughs> but i'm really trying to like this has been a huge hurdle for me which is not being precious about my paintings mm-hmm. um and our friend tony tony garaldi brown friend of the show <laughs> and of us uh-huh. um two-time guest <laughs> two-time guest <laughs> um he would always talk about he was kind of like my de facto art teacher mentor for like a year Mm -hmm. um when i first joined the art society even though i never met him he was the one to like convince me to first come to the meetings and stuff this is our um group art society which was um tony's a member i'm a member sergio is sort of a member (laughs) (laughs) but it was started by our friend andrea Mm -hmm. has she been on the show before yeah she was she Came on the open studio episode. Oh, right, right, right. And I was there. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, just a little art group that shares our work with each other. Um, and Tony would always talk about, like, 
and he would like compliment people's works that for like not being precious and he would always talk mm-hmm. about not being precious and <laughs> yeah. I was always like well I want to be precious I want to get all those little tiny details <laughs> I want it to like look like a photograph I want it to like look really cool mm-hmm. and all this stuff like that and I didn't get it at the time um, that there's huge value in like not being that way and in just like getting in there and doing what you can and practicing and I'd watch I'd been I'd watch like Sergio's time lapses or I'd watch, you know, other people's art that they do. Mm-hmm. And I'd see that like in the first like 15 minutes of the sketch, a lot of times, like it'll already look good. And mm-hmm. like learning to do that, learning to like get it where you want it to be in a short amount of time without like obsessing over all the details, I think is a hugely valuable skill. And I'm always like really proud of myself when I can like sit there and paint a plant in like an hour. And even if it doesn't turn out that good, and sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, at least I'm like putting the work in to like get those building blocks in, um, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and And that's something in our Facebook group um, that's talked about a lot is like one of the values of painting from life is like not getting caught up in all the little details Um, and like being under the pressure of the time constraints that painting from life presents. And you learn from that. You really do. And it's not necessarily a kind of learning that you could put into words like I learned this today. It's more just like something you learn from practice as to like what is valuable in this painting that you want to put in there in the mm-hmm. amount of time that you have. And yeah, I feel like that's a really valuable lesson for me. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge valuable lesson for um like that's what I feel like that's probably the biggest lesson you get from painting in plain air because you're you're basically forced to do that uh, like the world won't stop <laughs> right <laughs> spinning for you to finish your painting so like it it's such a th- training for your eye and your brain and all that that it like if i stop doing it i like my i feel like my overall art practice would go downhill so quickly <laughs> right and there's also something kind of satisfying about it that I can't really explain mm-hmm. that That's you don't true. really get from like painting from a photo. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's just like my personal sense of accomplishment or if it's just like I truly enjoy capturing the scene. I mean, one of the reasons I started doing art in the first place, which wasn't from life, um, it was mostly from my imagination, I think, at first and Mm -hmm. sometimes like from photos I took. But it was because it's like when you paint something that's beautiful, you kind of like take it in a little bit and really get to know it. And if I'm standing in front of like a beautiful scene that I love, like when we went to Dylan Beach and painted, for example, before this whole quarantine, Mm -hmm. it's like I feel really connected to it. that makes sense and it's like i really enjoy that feeling you know so yeah paint Hmm. from life (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's okay if you don't though you know i get a little annoyed when people are like the rules are that you can't paint from a photo you know and i was like that's a little like yeah we'll do whatever you really want (laughs) you know but i see the value of it for sure yeah that's the one thing like try it if you haven't done it before (laughs) yeah and you'll see the difference and it's going to (laughs) suck the first time you try and do it. It's not going to come out great, but you just got to get over that. Yeah. Take it for what it is. It's just an exercise. Something I notice a lot when I paint is like fear, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like even today when I was painting a little succulent and I was just like, why am I afraid to like paint this how it looks? Cause it's like my brain doesn't want to believe that it like looks how it looks because Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make that translation from 3d to a two day 2d page and i'm like Mm -hmm. oh this is hard to paint because it's got like foreshortening going on and it's like i kind of got to think about it differently right it's like i'm afraid to paint it how it looks because like my brain doesn't want to translate that that actually is what it is but it's not really that hard you just have to kind of learn to really look at it and don't be afraid to just like paint what you see even if it's like not what your brain is telling you that it looks like if that makes sense (laughs) yeah that's a huge um, shift in thinking about things for when you're actually able to do that, your powers of observation just shoot up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's actually starting to get kind of late here. So, okay. You think we got, it. think we got content? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll let the listeners decide on that, but we got we got time. Yeah. <laughs> we filled up our quota. Did we? <laughs> okay. <think> so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, if you have other topics, I'm up to keep talking, but it's up to you. Um, let's see. Here's a tip. Don't leave your white paint at home if you 
<laughs> decide to oh, no. go plain yeah. air paint. <laughs> so <laughs> you went to, to go plain air paint today and he forgot his white paint. <laughs> yeah. You had a nice light color though. It still came out all right. Yeah. I was doing like this weird sort of colorful wipe off technique. <laughs> so, oh, were you? <laughs> yeah. The white that you saw was the white of the canvas. I was just like wiping it oh, down. Oh, my... that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird way to to try and work but it kind of works this is a challenge the no white challenge <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> there you go you learned something <laughs> <laughs> the no white challenge also. gosh that sounds like a really hard challenge well at least you have a white canvas so you can work with that it's like watercolor <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. what's the taco bell one <laughs> <laughs> the taco bell think outside the bun <laughs> <laughs> oh we could spend all day just Messing with Sergio's soundboard. He got it out earlier and I just started pressing buttons like willy nilly until the program crashed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this is what I meant to hit for the no white challenge. That's racism, man. I love to racism, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think you played that one in like the last episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it didn't get enough credit. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about racist songs. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. right. We're just talking about loving these racist songs like chill, dude. <laughs> Right, I was like, was he being sarcastic? Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, he was. He was. <laughs> but like, I don't think you guys knew what he was talking about at first because he was trying to be like, I like this artist for like shock value. And right, then you're like, yeah, yeah. wait, what? And he's like, it's racist. And you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. But well, anyway, I've got to go home in an hour. So should we <laughs> yeah. get to our drawing <laughs> session? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that's been another fun thing that we've been able to do here, <laughs> which is... Having you model for Yeah, me. I've been modeling for some of Sergio's drawings. Yeah. A lot of fun. He did it's a couple a of last fun. night that turned out really, really good, and <laughs> I was really happy with him. So, yeah, Sergio <laughs> makes me look good, so I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, Instagram, Sergio Lopez Drawings. <laughs> yeah. Let's oh, see. God. Should we just go down our laundry list of things oh, to God. promote? Oh, <laughs> God. We each have four Instagram accounts we manage. <laughs> right, yeah. One of, the, one of Sergio's is waiting to dry. One of mine is a bit saucy podcast or other podcast. Yeah. Yeah, she took over the podcasting yeah. duties for our food podcast. Right, so Sergio doesn't have like a bajillion things. <laughs> um, but I also have my personal account. I have my art account, Compass yeah. Rose Artistry. And then and I have my flower account, photography account. Steadily growing. <laughs> yeah, Bloom Report Macro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sergio has a funny thing he says about Bloom Reports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta check those Bloom Reports. <laughs> yeah, we were watching Fargo recently. So <laughs> yeah. started falling into Midwestern accents <laughs> yeah. like constantly. Like, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We always say that. Uh, okay, okay then, then. <laughs> yeah my grandma was from minnesota from like the norwegian minnesota community so she totally had that accent <laughs> yeah like, you're allowed oh, to use it oh you betcha <laughs> i can't even do it that well you do it way better than me <laughs> <laughs> what was the word that she said you, you use this Oof, kind of, oh yeah that's right. yeah i think it means like oh shit in norwegian or <laughs> mm. i don't even know it's actually in norwegian but it's like a phrase mm. yeah <laughs> one time sergio called me and left me a voice message in um in a Midwestern accent. And I called him and was like, who was talking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've got a secret accent talent. <laughs> <laughs> talent in quotes, if you heard my, my New York accent earlier. <laughs> I, I, I think I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. New York is like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, just uh, keep looking for us on our social media um, once I'm done with my course, I'll be putting out more stuff on my social media related to that. So if you're interested in that, hit up Sergio Lopez Landscapes and follow that if you haven't yet. I think a lot of listeners follow that already, but there might be some people who will be into following that to see what sort of... What sort of little tips and tricks they yeah. can get from <laughs> A lot of people follow teaching. your main account um, and not quite as many people follow your landscape account, but it's really good. So people <laughs> should. You should. Everybody. <laughs> highly recommend. And highly recommend this course, especially if you want to learn to paint outside from life. Yeah. Super valuable lessons in there. And a six-page PDF is free. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I'm like an ad for you. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> yeah. a living ad. <laughs> God, yeah. We're probably annoying everybody at this point. Sorry, everybody. We, well, 
what do you think is what do you think is more annoying um the constant plugging i did this episode or the three minute ad that i had to do (laughs) every well if you're asking me i mean (laughs) maybe i shouldn't say bad things about your true true (laughs) well it's not them it was the fact that it was at the beginning of every episode for like several episodes and i'd be like kind of like roll my eyes a little bit like okay i gotta sit through this before the episode again (laughs) you know and i think it's the same ad it's yeah yeah so it was like the same exact thing Mm -hmm. so if you guys had like re-recorded it maybe but it's like i get why you have to do it i don't want to knock it too much because it's like okay this is how podcasts pay their bills and exist so Mm -hmm. if i enjoy them then i gotta sit through that so i get that but Mm -hmm. at the same time it's just like at the very beginning of the episode is this thing commercial i've heard before that's kind of long so you know that was a little (laughs) bit like okay (laughs) but you know thank you artwork archive for sponsoring winning or whatever (laughs) you did uh cross post cross promote yeah cross promote yeah, yeah that is appreciated so i'm not gonna say anything against that but <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right well that has been the latest episode of waiting to dry dip it in and sauce it up <laughs> yeah. okay.